And talk to me about the murder of David Regan. What do you want to know? So, I mean, the reports are that that, that was ordered by you, um, and and I think it was it was a there was was there some confusion around what that potentially related to? Well, we can't speak about the murder of David Regan without speaking mm. about the murder of Craig Barker. Okay. That's Tell me about the, that. That's where it all stemmed. So, Craig Barker was an innocent young man, never participated in any violence. He he trained the under 12s football team. He was only 18 himself, but this is what he he wanted to be a football coach. He loved his football. During that period with the with the rights where we were having friction with the rights within Liverpool, you've got families connected to families and families connected to families. So at the higher level, all these families, like the daughter of that family will be married to the son of that family. And that yeah. connects these criminal families, if you like to understand. Yeah. And that's where William Moore comes into the picture. Right. So um, it is what it is. We're doing what we're doing. The graph's bouncing. William Moore's being in jail while we're going through this process. He was sent to prison in Birmingham for 12 years for being arrested with 10 kilograms of brown on the motorway. So he's gone into custody during this period, but his family is still out doing what they do. Um, we started getting into friction with William Moore's younger brother called John Moore because he was a drug dealer in the area. We're 23, 24. He's 40, 41. He's been doing it for years. All of a sudden, we're stepping on their toes. So John Moore, John Moore's grafters, ended up standing on our toes and we've done what we normally do, pull them out the car, seriously hurt them, took the phones off them and they've took that as an insult. So John Moore's popped up. So I'll tell you the story. Hmm. So I came into a lump sum of legit money anyway from my grandparents and I invested it into bricks and mortar. And just on the end of the Grisdale estate, I managed to get hold of a property, turned it into a cafe and a flat above it. And I was living in the flat and I had the cafe underneath. And everyone used to come to the cafe and eat the... All the local drug dealers used to come to the cafe and eat the dinner and breakfast or whatever. And then on this particular... We'd already damaged this John Moore's grafters drug dealers. We've already pulled them out the car, cut them, took the phones and stuff like that. This one morning, I get a phone call off of, off an old associate saying, um, this Porky Moore is looking for you, because that's what they called him, Porky Moore, because he looked like a little fat pig. He said, Porky Moore is looking for you. And as he's saying that, Porky Moore comes past me on the outside. So I come out the cafe, he's driving past, he pulls over. Now, he must have been thinking I was going to um, go to bits and you know, crumble because of who he was. But he haven't. I've gone right round to the passenger seat, sat in the passenger seat of his car. And as I'm in the passenger seat of the car, he must have panicked because I've just opened his door, sat in. He's dropped something. But I haven't let on that I've seen it. He started running his mouth off about respect and this, that and the other. I was bowing down because I knew he'd had something in the car, but I haven't let on. I bowed down, got out the car, walked round to the driver's door as if I'm saying goodbye and snatched the keys out the ignition. Then I've told my friend to get a blade out the cafe. He's brought it over and I've plunged him in the shoulder, slapped him up and he screeched off, I'm going to tell our will he? So we thought not of it. It's just another confrontation with another local drug dealer, although they were old school and they, they basically they were the ones with the kilos and, you know, right shifting huge amounts of drugs and we'd fronted it if you like so what's happened there is within a week or something i've had a phone call off willie moore right but before before all this before all this willie moore's out of prison and he's come onto the grisdale estate and he spoke to me and he's offered us this, and he's offered us that, and, and we've said, okay, we'll take a test there, we'll get back on you, but we never got back on him because we were remaining loyal to the other firm. 
Yeah. And he's took that as an insult as well. And that's why his brother put his grafters on our estate, you know, to step on the toes. So we get a phone call off Willie Moore. You disrespect my family, blah, blah, blah. Duh, 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 duh. And that was that. During this process, we're still having a bit of trouble with Michael Wright. And Michael Wright had an older brother called Joseph Wright. And Joseph Wright's drug dealing partner was Davy Regan. So Davy mm-hmm. Reg- Davy Regan became the go between between you know like the peace negotiator between the right mm-hmm. and us. So every time an incident happened, Davy Regan would be placed in the picture and go and talk to them, just try and calm it down, all that type of stuff. So we're moving along. Uh, one of one of the kids who's been around us for years, Craig Arrow Smith. This is all in the same period. Craig Arrow Smith, he's got he's he's got his wages, he's gone into town with his girlfriend. What when he's gone into town with his girlfriend, he's bumped into um distant relatives of the right firm. They've got on a tim, they've caused a little bit of trouble with him in the old five one nightclub. He'd come out the old five one nightclub. Um Craig little arrow little Craig sent his bird home. Not Craig Barker, Craig Arrow Smith. He's put his girl in a taxi. And then I had a confrontation with this group of lads. The group of lads have chased them to a hotel called the Adelphi. Yeah. And on, on this side of the Adelphi, you've got a wall, which is about four foot high. But on the other side of the wall, it's a hundred foot drop. So Craig's being getting chased, jumped over the wall and yeah. snapped his neck. So he's died. So we're all a bit destroyed off him dying. We've been to his funeral. We've been, you know, doing what you do. You go to the wake, you go to the funeral, you bury him. We've done. We've just went through that process. So as we we're just chilling now. It's the day after the funeral. There's, there's, we're in a car. There's three of us in the car. Me, my youngest brother Ian, and a lad called Michael Rich, uh, Mark Richardson. He's lifed off now for the Michael Wright murder. So we're, there's three of us in the car. Um, we go on to our estate, and as we go on to our estate, we see Craig, Craig Barker, the 18-year-old kid, yeah, just by himself on the estate. So we say, "Do you want to come with us? We're going for we're going for a scran and that." So we get in the car, and he was into his auto traders, and he goes, "Look at this! Look at this! Look at this car identical to yours. We're in a Galaxy Z Tech 2.3 on a 52 plate." And he showed us a Galaxy 2.8 Gaia X on a 52 plate. There was only one one number in the reps difference. And it was like a more powerful car, more luxurious. You had um, screens in the headrest where you could rig up a computer. And he was going, he was he, he sort of convinced me, when you get it, Darren, when you get it, Darren. So I went, you know what? Go and get this money for me. Got 10 grand. Went to where the car was for sale in Southport. So the four of us have drove to Southport, ended up purchasing this car for about nine and a half thousand pounds. Me and Craig have jumped in the new Galaxy and Ian and Mark have followed us behind it. And we've drove home to my Mars estate, drove in the close, parked the Sea Tech up outside my mum's, and then left in the new Galaxy to go to speak. And the reason we went to speak was to buy a computer because this new car had screens in the headrest where you could look yeah. at So we went to speak, bought uh, the computer, had a McDonald's. A few hours later, my mum was rang me saying, come and get your washing. So my mum was doing me washing because I lived in the flat round the corner. We come in, went to my mum's. I've asked... At this moment, Craig's in the back with Mark playing on the new computer. I'm in the front with Ian. I've asked Craig to come into my mum's with me and get these bags of washing. We've got the bags of washing, put them in the boot. Then I've said to Craig, you've been on there for an hour or two now. Swap seats. So Craig's got out the back seat and got into my seat, which was the passenger seat, because I was banned. Everyone knew me in the passenger seat. Now I'm in the back seat. We drive out. Coming out of our estate to do a right towards me flat where the cafe was. It's becoming dusk now on the 6th of April. And as we do that, there's a car face just in the side seat with its lights off, but its engine running. 
and my little brother goes, get on the Mondeo there with its lights off. So we were going to drive and I was going to follow us and do the deed probably outside my gaff. But I've said slam it reverse. So now we're looking at the driver. He's only got his face covered with his hand. So as we're looking at the driver, the back passenger door opens. So we're focused on the driver. The back passenger seat opens. The gunman was lying flat on the back seat and come out the car feet first. And when he's opened the back door, he's being crouched behind the back door so you couldn't see him. You could only see the back door swing open. So mm -hmm. as I've said, get on the back door, how the fuck's that just opened? He's popped out and let a shot off to the passenger window. The, the bullet's gone through the passenger window. The ZTEC 2.3 that we left outside my mum's was an automatic. The new one was a manual. So when the bullets come through the glass, I've told my younger brother, put your foot down and get out of here. He's let the clutch out too fast and stalled on the spot. The gunman, this um, Darren Waterhouse, SAS trained soldier, zigzagged up to the car. Pounced on Craig, put his gun point blank to Craig's chest and worked down the sternum, emptying the clip. Now, as Craig's taking them bullets, he's trying to get away from him. So he's going over the centre console where the handbrake and that is in the car and he's ending up on Ian. So Craig's back is on Ian. All of the gunman's waist deep now. He's followed him. So Craig couldn't get away from him. All them bullets that's gone through him have come out of him and gone into my little brother. So he, he's done his deeds. I've had to open the back door, gone to Ian's door, my younger brother, the driver's door. He's fell out. I've picked him up, put him on the back seat. Mark's already opened the door and ran away. He got one in the shoulder. But he's opened, the, he's opened the door and ran away from the scene. I've had to push Craig back over into the passenger seat, start the car and go towards the Liverpool Royal Hospital. So, As in, so Craig, Craig ends up being killed. Your brother's seriously wounded. How soon after that was the decision to go after David Regan? Ten days later. 10 days later and you go after david regan and if that was did you call the shot yeah so to to get to that point of what happened um i've gone i've got them to the hospital he's died we're doing all you know we're all i'm feeling responsible you know the, the gunman came for me i just swapped seats craig's dead ian's in a coma I've come out of that Royal Hospital that night. My head's gone. I go back to another apartment he had in the city centre. I'm sitting there with two guns. My weed intake went through the roof. So I'm getting more paranoid and more suspect about anyone and everyone. Eventually, you know, I've got to go and see his mum, Craig's mum. She sent a gazebo up outside the family home. I'm sitting in there. We're all thinking revenge, retaliation, but we didn't know who it was. Eventually, I get a phone call off William Moore. What we've been through, blah, 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 blah. That, that kid shouldn't have been shot dead. David Regan was driving the car. And that's what put David Regan in the picture. Right. So we fast forward now to the 18th of May. So the 6th of April, Craig's shot dead. 10 days, two weeks later, we get the information that David Regan was driving. For a week or 10 days, we're letting them know that we know he was involved. Phone calls, threatening phone calls, turning up at his brother's house, you know, looking for them, stuff like this. Yeah. Eventually, I got the whereabouts of his business 
which was a, a car wash business. Most drug dealers back in the day used to use them sort of businesses to launder the money. Yeah. So we found out where his business was a couple of days before we went down and done a little recce on it. You know, had a little look around what route we were going to take. On the 18th of May, uh, we purchased a car. We just sent some smackhead down to purchase a car, just a little old car, a little Escort. We'd also had another Galaxy. So, obviously, we needed a firearm. One of my mates, Dad, Ricky, he was connected to the Farleys. We asked, we asked Ricky to speak to, because they were involved in security, then was at that time. We've asked them for a firearm. They give us a Beretta with a silencer. We've put the Beretta with a silencer in the glove compartment of the Escort that we purchased. We'd left it at the bottom of the road, parked up for a few hours. Got a phone call saying David Regan is now at the car wash. So we've just left our estate, five of us, after discussing about, you know, we need to get in, we need to show them what the, the, the Craig's dead, we need someone to pay for it. We've ended up in the car, tandem. It's about quarter three in the afternoon on the 18th of May. It's a nice sunny day. We're, we, we drive up Everton Road, go down West Derby Road, down to Brook, do a right onto Green Lane, end up on Lower, Lower Kensington Road, Prescott Road. And we do a right. We come across the car wash. It's on the left. We see David Regan's BMW. He's, he's sat in the front with his brother. The gunman is in the escort with the driver. I'm in the Galaxy with the driver. And there was another car floating behind us, a theatre bath with someone else in it. We, we slam on outside the, the, the garage. The gunman jumps out with the Beretta. Let's a shot off through the windscreen. David Regan gets out, starts running. The gunman pursues him and hits him three times in the back. And then he's dead. Two days later, I'm arrested for conspiracy, no, for murder. They couldn't charge me with the murder. I'm about to be released from custody. Uh, the girlfriend of David Regan made numerous statements that were untrue. I ended up getting charged with threats to kill. Went to court under armed guard with a helicopter and all this sort of stuff. Ended up in prison on the threats to kill. Six weeks later, they've come back and charged me with conspiracy to murder with persons unknown. And that's that. And what did you do for that? What sentence? Yeah, sentence. So I've got 18 years and done 12 for it. I weren't classed as the gunman. I was classed as yeah. a conspirator, someone who conspired with the unknown gunman. And what happened to David Walterhouse, who was responsible for killing your friend Craig? Darren oh, Waterhouse and William Moore. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they, got to them? they got convicted for a contract killing. Right. It was proven in court. And back in the day, a policeman being murdered or a contract killing by firearm, you'd ended up with 30, 35 plus recommendations. So they ended up with 35 years each for contract right. killing. I ended up with 18. Because the judge, back in back in that time, pre-2004, he could have given you a discretionary life sentence yeah, or a long determinant for conspiracy to murder. Now, yeah. it's 30 rec standard. Yeah. It's yeah, a recommendation, it's isn't it? It's very different now. So because, yeah, of like... a, because of a threat to the public, you give me a long determinant sentence. 